Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, it's part five of the new excavator. Well, this so far is not a build for the faint at heart. Um, it takes quite a bit of dedication and quite a bit of time. At this point, we are here, and this has been 60 hours. 60 hours logged in to get to this point here, and there's still a ton more to do. This may be quite possibly one of the longest series that I've ever placed on the show. We'll wait and see. Guys, there's a lot to cover this week, and it's all going to start off with all of those rectangles and squares that we cut last week to make the base of our excavator. The process to shape or do the final cutting on these pieces is fairly simple. So I'll do one here as an example. So let's start here with the left side deck. And we can see that we have a little notch here in the side that is two inches long. We don't know the depth, but if we look here, we have two and a quarter inches wide, but on this side, it's only two and three sixteenths. So that is going to tell us right off the bat that we are one sixteenth short. So this little notch is one sixteenth deep by two. All I'm going to do is use my anchor T rule and mark that out. And I'm just going to cut it at the scroll saw. If you don't have a scroll saw, don't worry. You can do it at the band saw. You can use hand tools. You can use a hand saw if you want. There's many methods. The methods that I show you on this show are not the only ones that you can use. As well, we can see here, this is our front profile and it is showing a one quarter inch radius if we look here, we're looking at the end. So this is a quarter inch radius round over all the way along this end. We can do that over at the router table. But this little short radius here, a one eighth inch radius, to do that little short piece on a router table is extremely dangerous. That there, we are gonna mark out with a circle template and we will sand it over at the belt sander. You don't have a belt sander, that's okay. One of your blocks with sandpaper attached to it will sand that 1 8 round over very, very quickly. So let's get this piece finished and I'll show you what it is that it ended up looking like. And then after a light sanding, you end up with your piece with all your routed profiles on the proper edges and our little notch cut out there. Guys, none of these pieces that we um, hacked out last week to their dimensions, none of them are any more difficult than what I've just done on this piece. So mark them carefully according to the dimensions on the plans and get all of your pieces cut. And I'll show you what they should look like when you get all of that done. And that is six of them done. Um, now there is two pieces that are a little different. One of them is this middle deck and it's not a round over, but rather it shows a 1 8 inch 45 degree chamfer right there on the end. And that is just easily cut using your miter fence, a cross cut blade, uh, set your fence to 45 degrees and follow through with the cut and you should end up with a nice chamfer on the end of your piece. The other piece that I want to point out is this boom arm base support over here on sheet five. Now, there's a couple ways that you can do this. You can dimension this out like what I've done and draw it out on your piece and then cut it over at the scroll saw with this center part here being an interior cut or if you don't want to dimension this out and go through that trouble, you can photocopy this pattern. Photocopy it, attach it to your stock using some spray adhesive and cut it out from there. If you don't have a scroll saw, as I said, you could use a fret saw in the middle here, drill your quarter inch holes in the corner and follow through with a fret saw to finish it off. And you could do the same thing with these notches here. Many ways to cut these pieces, guys. Use whatever method is best suited to your tools and to your ability. And before too long, you end up with your piece like that. Now, the next pieces that we're going to need to complete the, uh, the base here, 
will be these boom arm uh, base sides. Now we need to make two, I'm gonna stack cut these, but really what you're going to need, you're not gonna trace this out onto a piece of stock. So what I'm going to do is, for starters, I need myself a photocopy of this pattern. So when cutting pieces like this, while you can cut it completely on the scroll saw or with a fret saw if you like, I have through experience found that any time that you can cut a straight edge with a table saw or something to get it truly straight, that is your best bet. And therefore, what I've done is I've cut out the pattern so that this baseline here will line up with the bottom of the stock. And I have cut our stock to the exact width of seven, or the length rather, sorry, of seven and one eighth. And I have made it a little wider at two and a quarter. Now what I will do is I'm going to coat these in masking tape and tape the two pieces together. We will then glue our pattern on just like this, being very careful to line up our bottom and our sides. And by doing that, we will now ensure that both of these are perfectly square and that they're perfectly flat and they'll fit properly in the model. By cutting them both at the same time and drilling the holes at the same time, we are ensuring that everything is identical and everything will line up. So I don't think we need a video of this. It's as simple as drilling the 1 8 hole, drilling the 3 16 through hole, and then cutting this at the scroll saw. And when we get that done, we'll peel them apart and we can move on with some other pieces. All right, so we are going to move on with the rest of the pieces for this lower assembly. And honestly, these ones might be intimidating, but we're going to start with these rear deck base and the rear deck top and the rear deck pieces. Now, while they might seem intimidating, um, they're not that bad as long as you do things in a certain order and you do them carefully. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut our stock to its rough dimensions. And for that, we can get those dimensions right here. Um, this one here is going to be cut from a piece of stock that is one and three sixteenths of an inch thick. This one from the same, one and three sixteenths. And this one up here will be cut from a piece that is one and one quarter. So we will follow the length dimensions and basically cut blocks that will represent these and then we can move on from there. So we have our three blanks cut out and I'm going to point out something here that you want to be cautious of. This 9 sixteenths. Do not cut this piece to be 9 sixteenths because if you do that, you will end up with this piece which is much too short so you'll end up with a piece of kindling. So you want to be careful. That 9 16 is actually where that little radius begins, right here. It's denoted by kind of a shaded area. It is not 9 16 it's 21 30 seconds thick. So you just want to be cautious of that. Um, all of these are one and three sixteenths of an inch wide. Now that denotes from this flat back section here to the top of this arc. I have cut them all to one and a quarter to give us a little bit of extra wiggle room. Also, you want to pay attention to these. This is your end view. In other words, if you take this and flip it this way, this is what you're looking at right here at the end of this board. So this one shows on the bottom edge, bottom front edge, it will have a quarter inch round over. And then this arc starts here, here at the end and goes around this way. So we're now going to mark out the, the arcs on all of these because we're going to deal with that first. But I have to show you how I'm going to do it. Normally, I would just cut out these patterns. But I had a viewer send me this thing and it is one of the coolest things I have ever seen, which is this AccuArc ruler. So I am able to draw a center line on all of these now, line up this AccuArc and just draw the uh, 
the arc on there so that I can transfer all my drawings. So what I'm going to do is for each one of these, I am going to transfer the profiles onto the proper sides. Okay, that's just spectacular. So I want to say thank you for sending this out to me. Uh, I'm not going to mention names. You know who you are. Uh, that's awesome. Love it. All right. So as I said, let's get the rest of these marked out and we can carry on. Okay, so at this point, for this one here, the rear deck and the rear deck base, for these two here, we want to cut just outside of our lines. You can use a bandsaw, you can use a coping saw, scroll saw, which is probably what I'm going to choose. And then once you get that done, you're going to need a little bit of double-sided tape. So I actually ended up reversing the arc on this thicker piece, the rear deck, because I noticed a little chip down here in the bottom. It was actually on the on one of these offcut sides, but it would have shown, so I had to reverse it so I could cut it off. But what you're going to do now is take a little strip of double-sided tape, and we are going to tape these two sections together so that their edges and the back flat edge here completely line up. Clamp these together. That'll help your double-sided tape get extra adhesion. And once you're absolutely happy with it, that everything is lined up, I'll see you over at the belt sander. Well, in order to distance my fingers, you guys have seen me do this before. I used a little double-sided tape to tape this onto a block of cherry in this case. It doesn't matter. It's a larger block so that I can hold it here and sand it instead of trying to hold it here, which as you can see would not work out well. So all we're going to do is using the belt sander, I've checked to make sure that it's square to the table. I'm going to sand both pieces up to this line here and uh, even them both out. Now on the drawings, it shows a 1 8 radius on either side, just to the end of this arc that I've drawn. We are not going to do that just yet. We're going to do it after, but for now, let's just get this main arc sanded up to the line so that they're both the same. And look at how beautifully smooth and even those are. That is just gorgeous. Okay. So we're not going to do anything with this just yet. There's more to do, but leave this all taped together because we're going to have to do more to it. We're going to turn our attention to this rear uh, deck top. Now this here is a little confusing in that it shows these crosshairs and then it shows kind of this protruding. I don't even know what that is, but we can see it over here at the uh, exploded view, it looks like a little round disc or something, although I don't see a part for that anywhere here. So I'm going to do things a little differently here. I'm going to mark these holes and then I'm going to drill a shallow, probably maybe um, a quarter of an inch, three eighths diameter hole exactly at those spots in the top of our blank. Well, this is where it might get a little confusing. We can see here on this front profile that this is actually sloped. This curve has a slope to it. And I've measured this slope right here, and that is 16 degrees. So what we need to do now is take our piece here with our 3 8 holes in it and flip it over. So now we're looking at the bottom. And we will take our other pieces and we will line it up with um, the back and the side edges, just like that. And then carefully, we will trace the profile that we sanded. There you go. So this is where it gets a little confusing. What we need to do now is go over to the scroll saw and tilt our blade 16 degrees. And we're going to cut along this line as carefully as we can. But you want to be careful, depending on which way you tilt it, it's going to make a difference as to which way you cut it. If you tilt your blade this way, 
and you cut it like this, well, you're automatically cutting it wrong and you're gonna be sloped the wrong way. You'll need to cut it this way if your blade is tilted to the right. If your blade is tilted to the left, well, you're gonna to need to turn it around this way and cut it clockwise. So just be mindful of which way you're cutting, which way your blade is tilted, and which way your angle is going to go. So let's get this angle cut here and um, I'll, I'll show you how that's gonna work. Okay, so I've angled my blade. In this case, with the Excalibur, the table stays stationary. Um, so I hope I didn't confuse some of you whose tables tilt. But what I'm gonna do here in the waist area, I'm just going to make one quick little cut. Now this is the bottom, and if I flip it this way, we can see it's tilting the right direction. So it's okay for me to cut this now. I know that I'm following the right way around. So I'm gonna get this cut. The important thing when cutting on an angle like this is make sure that you have blade or good blade tension. I'm gonna do that right now just to verify. And as well, you want to go slow. It's very easy to get blade deflection on an angled cut. So let's get this cut out and I'll show you with the end results. And look at how beautiful that is. Look at that nice 16 degree cut there and that will get stacked on top of our other ones lined up at the back eventually. And look at that, you get a nice little curve just like that, that looks great. Okay, so there's still more to do to this piece. Don't think you're done. Um, we can also see here, this is the uh, the side view of it and we can see another angle here on these sides with a 1 8 inch radius so if I measure that angle it appears to be 19 degrees so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to the table saw and using my miter fence I'm going to lop this off here at 19 degrees very carefully uh, making sure that I don't cut any length off of our corners here. And at this point now with those two sides cut, we can take it over to the belt sander and we will sand that 1 8 inch radius on each of these top corners. And now what we want to do is take another piece of double sided tape and we will tape this on top of our entire assembly here once again lining up the back edge and our side edges and then we're going to head over to the sander and sand that 1 8 inch radius that's here at the corners. We'll do this on everything all at once so that everything lines up perfectly. Okay well truth be told I don't really like the way this edge fit here. So there is absolutely nothing wrong. In fact, I encourage it to take one of these sanding blocks that you made and just tune it up. Get in there and give it a little sanding, you know, fix it up to the way you want it. And then when you're happy with it, when you're happy with it, I guess we can separate all of these pieces. And for the top piece, that's it. For the rear deck, that's it. But for the rear deck base, you're going to want to put a quarter inch round over all the way around. Um, now I recorded it, or so I thought, but some bonehead forgot to press record and it didn't work. Um, so what you need to do for this is get this thing in a hand screw clamp so that you can hold on to it and honestly, guys, if you don't know the benefits of using a starter pin on your router table, you should really learn it because um, it will help a lot to prevent the kickback on the router because it gives extra support as you feed it into the bit. So just be very careful with that and get that bottom quarter inch roundover done. Now for my liking, 
This is probably one of the only times you're ever gonna hear me say this in a model build. I went through all this work, and yeah, these pieces fit absolutely beautifully, but I'm a little disappointed that when this all glues together, um, they won't be very defined. So what I want to do is just lightly, and I mean lightly, these front corners, I'm just gonna give them a light sanding to round them off a bit to define each one of these pieces when it gets glued together. And let me show you how that's gonna work. So that's it for that one. And this one here. That's all you need, that little bit of sanding. And that will, can you see how that just placed a really nice definitive line between those two pieces? So that's what I want. I want these pieces defined. Um, so I'm going to sand off the corners of each of these. And there's one last piece here um, that we need to make, and that will be this middle deck block. Uh, this is a small piece, guys. Small piece with 45 degree angles, it looks like, and a little bit of a round over. You could do this at the table saw, but quite honestly, um, I think it's a little tight for the table saw. So I'm gonna head to the scroll saw, mark this all out. I will cut these 45s close and then we'll sand up to the line over at the uh, at the belt sander. It's such a simple piece. I don't think we need a video of it. So let's get this cut. And then the next piece we're gonna turn our attention to or pieces, cause we need two of them, are these boom arm base sides, the small ones. So for that, again, you're gonna need a photocopy of this little pattern. Well, we are gonna cut these in the same fashion that we cut the boom arm base sides. And I have two blanks cut out here. They are seven eighths of an inch long and five eighths uh, wide, three sixteenths of an inch thick. We are going to stack these up just like this, tape them together, and then adhere this pattern with spray adhesive. From there, we'll drill this hole. This one is a 532nd through hole, and then carefully cut that profile. The important part here is the distance of this hole from the two flat surfaces. So if you're not exactly perfect on your arches and your curves here, don't sweat it. Well, using our exploded view as well as our deck subassembly section view, um, I've done a dry fit and everything is really looking great. I haven't had to adjust anything yet and that all comes from careful marking, measuring and cutting. Now, I really like the way that these pieces are fitting together and even the square edges here, everything is square, everything lines up. Um, so we're not going to glue this together yet. This is pretty much the majority of the pieces for this deck subassembly, except for the deck cabinet. Um, this is going to be a tricky piece. I'm really deciding how I want to do it, but that is what we're going to start off with next week. And unfortunately, once again, that's all the time that we have for this week. Um, there doesn't seem to be that much progress today, or at least the pieces don't seem that complicated. But in order to do it properly, in order to do it safely, and in order to keep these little things all intact, I almost missed my thumbs there, <laughs> in order to keep everything all together, you need to take your time. And for that reason, all of the pieces that you saw on today's show took just over seven hours to make. Um, and it was just a little bit of marking, a little bit of cutting, it was really nothing extravagant, nothing special. The craziest piece was the top of that, that rear curved section. That was the most complicated piece that we made today. And that was time consuming just to do it safely in itself. So I've said it before, I will say it again. Do not be in a hurry, guys. Um, being in a hurry during one of these will do nothing more than injure you. So please take your time. 
Guys, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click that bell and then you won't miss the notification of future episodes of the show. I really want to give a big thank you to the viewer that sent in that uh, AccuArc thing. That thing was amazing. I really enjoyed the way it worked for this. And it's going to have a great home here in the shop. It will be used on future projects. Um, you know who you are, as I said. I don't want to mention any names, but I do want to say thank you very much. Guys, I hope that you've enjoyed today's content. I hope you're following along with your own set of plans. And I hope you're enjoying the process. And I hope these videos are helping you. More importantly, I honestly hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.